We make a lot of videos, which is why over the years we've built out over two and a half petabytes of bulk storage. But somehow it's not enough. It's never enough. And that's especially true when you consider all of our upcoming projects. The videos just keep coming, the badminton slash gaming center needs capacity, and if I am ever gonna deliver on that free storage backups as an employee perk concept, I'm gonna need a lot more storage, like at least another petabyte worth. <laughs> In this economy? You're right, storage ain't cheap, but what if I told you that I could get a petabyte for half the price? I'm listening. Well, we can. In our quest to find the most cost-effective storage upgrade, we stumbled upon these. They are recertified drives, but the recertification is done by Seagate themselves, and they come in at just about half the price of the same drives brand new. So, like any other sane person would, I immediately handed eBay my credit card information and ordered $10,000 worth of them. That's 60 drives. So you gotta be wondering, Linus, What's the catch? Come closer and I'm gonna tell you. It's our sponsor. MSI, they've got laptop deals on deck this December. From the sleek and slim modern 15H AI to the gaming powerhouse Katana A15 AI. You can save big by clicking our link in the description. Okay, the real answer to what's the catch is we don't know yet. That's kind of the point of this adventure. You see, the best advice that we've ever gotten and given is to avoid secondhand storage. So this is kind of untreaded territory for us, but the deal <laughs> was too sweet to pass up. Now, it's not like we were worried about getting outright scammed. eBay has pretty good buyer protections and the main sellers of these recertified drives seem to have excellent ratings with most of the drives even coming with some kind of warranty. But there's still a lot of questions like, what does recertified even mean? Are they used? It's hard to say. I mean, the eBay listings for these drives say that they have extremely low power on hours and no bad sectors, which would seem to suggest that they're basically brand new, but if they were recertified by Seagate, the manufacturer, then in theory, they could just reset the power on hours. The next thing the script says is unbox them, but there's not a whole lot of unboxing to do. Like, is this how they came? Well, it's it's not like when you buy an individual drive, it's not like they're all gonna ship in like Amazon packaging. When you're buying 60, they come in trays. And that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so how used do these look? I would say... They look pretty not used to me. Not I mean, at all. There's some fingerprints, but you know, our inventory people definitely put asset tags on them. Not on this one. Oh. It's freaking clean. I wear gloves? Even the screw holes. Uh -huh. I don't think these have ever been mounted to anything. Look at this. 22. 2022. Are they all like that? 2020. 2021. So these were manufactured any time over the last few years. I mean, these drives didn't come out until like the end of 2021, like December. Oh yeah, that one's 2020. So that must be a very early one. Where did they come from? Server parts deals. Ah, yes. On eBay. So instead of buying our drive from Seagate's own store, we chose server part deals. They sell them either factory sealed, still recertified, but sealed, or they actually crack them open and pre-burn and test them for up to 50 hours. According to server part deals, the chance of getting a DOA drive is actually much lower with those burn-in ones. So we opted for that. When we picked these up last December, sometimes it takes us a while to catch up to our production ideas. Yeah. We found that the sweet spot was these 20 terabyte drives for $180 a piece. And looking on eBay, it seems like we actually got a pretty sweet deal. They're closer to $220 now, but even that is a huge discount compared to new. And you could probably save a bit by buying from them directly rather than buying through eBay. Disclosure, by the way, Server Part Deals is one of our sponsors now, but not on this video, and they actually weren't when we bought these drives from them. No, we, we paid retail for these. Should we plug them in? Yeah, I wanna see if the hours are correct. Okay. We got Seagate C Tools, we've got one of our drives here. Yeah. Drive details, smart, 21. Okay. That checks out. That's like nothing, essentially. Yeah. Great. Now we just need a machine to put them in. 
Since our goal is to save a buck, we're gonna reuse as much hardware as possible, starting with this 45 drive Storinator XL60 that we decommissioned a few years ago. It still fits 60 drives, just like it did when it was part of our original petabyte cluster, but now it has double the capacity because we're using 20 terabyte drives. <laughs> Man, I remember when we built that, so many people were like, you're crazy, dude, just, just use the cloud, bro. Newsflash, the cloud is f***ing expensive, bro. And even when it isn't, getting your data back from it is really expensive. It's actually been pretty validating seeing how many folks have been migrating back to having their servers on-prem. Now, to be clear, we do use Backblaze backups, but only for backup and only for our active projects. Now, obviously, a home or a small business user is unlikely to have one of these kicking around, but everything that we're doing could be scaled down to just a handful of drives in a NAS chassis, or even a single drive in a recycled Optiplex, like that one that Jake has right next to him, which is the same one that we showed off in our HexOS announcement video. There's actually even people selling 3D printed NAS cases that look pretty cool. The point is, you don't need to buy dozens of drives in a fancy old server to get a great deal. Or at least what we hope is a really great deal. <laughs> you sound so confident. Oh, I'm confident, all right. I'm confident it's time to rip these out of here. Oh, it's almost as old as me. It is not. On the subject of our server being kind of old, there are some choice upgrades we want to make to this old girl before we throw her back in the rack. Oh yeah. If our inventory records are correct, the CPU in that machine is over eight years old and performs similarly to a first-gen Ryzen 5. I mean, look, don't get me wrong. There is absolutely no shame in driving the car you got. And for home use, Realistically, your network speed is gonna be a bottleneck before your CPU. But we happened to have some newer hardware sitting on the shelf, specifically this ASRock Rack Rome D8 2T with an Epic 7402P 24 core processor. According to Passmark, it is nearly five times faster than the old eight core that it's replacing. Now, one important tip, if you are gonna be reusing old gear like our old board, make sure to update the BIOS to get the latest security patches and definitely replace any dried out thermal paste. This one should be good. I, I redid that not that long ago. Okay, board's in, but I forgot to check the memory. It looks like, yeah, we got 256 gigs of RAM in here, which means we should probably put in some more. The rule of thumb is about one gig of RAM per terabyte of storage for read caching, but our workload is actually pretty read light, so I think we're just gonna leave this for now. What we're not gonna leave are these HBAs. These high point 750s were end of life years ago, but more importantly, they just kinda suck. So the plan is to replace them with some LSI 9200 series cards. Now these are also very old, like PCI Express Gen 2 era old, but for us, that's a feature since they happen to have the right connectors for the cabling in our machine. So specifically, we're gonna be using a pair of genuine LSI eight drive cards, and then three of these 16 drive cards, two of which are genuine, and one of which is an eBay knockoff. Now, we had a whole video planned on these things back in the day, which is actually why we have this. I think this one's the fake one. Yeah, it doesn't say LSI on the front, whereas the other ones do, but the thing is, counterfeit silicon is pretty unusual, and I suspect this is just old chips from maybe failed boards in some other way that have been resoldered onto new boards, so it should be fine? I guess that's part of the adventure. I've had some friends who've had these like cheap cards work for years without issues, and others who've had them die in a few months. We don't have much choice either way, since the legit ones are really hard to find. I'm almost done wiring up all the drives, then all I gotta do is chuck a little M.2 boot drive in there, and then in our last slot, that's not it, uh, I'm gonna be using a Mellanox, there we go, NVIDIA ConnectX 6 dual port 100 gig network card. Oh, you wanna put that in too? We're also gonna use this cool adapter doodad to connect this two and a half inch Dell Gen 4 NVMe SSD that we had lying around, and then we can use that to help with read caching or level two arc. It can hang out. Let's screw it in first. What? I don't need to screw nothing in. You screw it in. Look, it fell out. Well, that's because you didn't screw it in. Way to go, Jake. I didn't say drop it on the ground. Way to Be go, careful. Jake. That was from StarTech. They kindly sent that to us. Thanks, StarTech. Now to keep everything in this area cool, I'm gonna throw in a Noctua Industrial 3000 RPM 140 mil fan. That way we won't have any issues with overheating on our network card HBAs or the NVMe SSD that's in there. Now to find out if it boots. 
I don't actually know. It like it probably should. Nah. My optimism is steadily decreasing. If you have a situation like this where you're not getting the display signal from a computer you're trying to troubleshoot, a good way to check if it's actually working is to use caps lock or num lock, which you can see when I click caps lock, it is turning on and off. So clearly this system is posting, it's just not outputting the display signal for some reason, or potentially this cable or the monitor is not working. I'm gonna try the IPMI and see if that works. Hey, okay, it's working, sick. With that out of the way, let's talk software. There are obviously a lot of options, but our go-to for a while has been TrueNAS Scale. It's free, which is always great, and most importantly, the ZFS file system it uses is perfect for large setups like this, and super resilient. So if we have any issues with these drives, which I hope we don't, our data should be fine. If you're a home gamer, you might also want to check out HexOS, the user-friendly NAS software Linus invested in once it's out of early access. But if you're not feeling adventurous, there's always Unraid, whose main claim to fame is the ability to expand its array one drive at a time, or there's Open Media Vault. We've got TrueNAS installed now, everything seems to be working, and we can finally put some hard drives in. Oh! Heavy is a full tray. It's heavy, so I've recruited help. It'll take a sec for them all to get like detected and imported, but let's see how many we have so far. Ooh, is she working? I mean, it's on, but I haven't looked at the drives yet. So oh, I guess, okay. let's see. Uh, how it is 61. There? Wow. They're all working. Well, they all show up. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we haven't made an array yet. Should we run a smart test on all of them first? Can you do that all at once? Oh yeah. Nice. Wow, well that's great. So they all pass a short smart test. If you're getting new drives, you should do more than that. You should, usually people recommend zeroing them all out, not because you need to clear the data, but as a burn-in to make sure that all the sectors are good and everything is happy. Well, we're not gonna do that right now, but it's not a bad thing to try. And in theory, server and part deals has already done that for us. Cool. So we can make a pool now. Oh boy, what do you want to call it? Swimming. What? So it's a swimming pool. Mm, I don't like that. I'm gonna call it ocean. I'm not salty. Since this is primarily archival storage, and since we have a lot of disks, we're gonna group our drives into six 10-drive RAID Z2 VDEVs. That two in the RAID Z2 means that we have two drives worth of data protection, kind of like RAID 6. So for us to lose any actual data, we would need to have three drives fail, and all three would have to be within the same 10-drive group, which is fairly unlikely, since multi-drive failures like that usually happen when you end up with drives from the same bad batch. And since our drives are recertified, it's much more likely that they are from different time periods and different batches. And the script says in theory, because we hadn't actually looked at the stamps on the chassis yet, in practice, they are very different. 2021, 2022, they're all over the place. Now, for a home setup, you're probably gonna go with something like a four, six, or eight wide RAID Z1 or Z2, depending on how important that data is to you. But with the new RAID Z expansion feature, you can start as small as two or even three drives and then expand that existing group as you wanna add more drives. That's pretty convenient. Yeah, well, we can click start now, or okay. go. Yeah, do it. So we should have 873 tibby bytes. What are you waiting for, you coward? TIB to TB. 960 terabytes. Damn. Hard drives have just been kind of quietly in the background, getting like kind of awesome. Kind of thick. Well, I've paid absolutely no attention to them. <laughs> it's like children. Uh, our cache SSD is not detected. Most people, if they're trying to build something like this at home, they're not building with a petabyte of drives. They're not going to have a cache SSD in it. No. So let's have a look. Something about it is not happy. We will have to figure that out later. Yep. I'm not expecting like crazy numbers because it's really old HBAs and we have a very wide VDEP size. I mean, but eight gigabytes a second, that's pretty good. Or Gibby uh, bytes. Oh, I'll, you go. I'll take it. It goes up and down and up and down. It's hard drives, so we're not really gonna get much better than that. Well, dude, I'm not gonna complain about that. That's sick. We're not even gonna be able to realistically do that, so. Yeah. That's great. But most of what we're doing on this thing is sequential anyway. Exactly. That is like five to seven times what we would even be doing over like a 10 gig connection. Yeah, which is most of the accesses we do, except when we're doing backups and stuff anyways, so. Great. Freaking awesome. Yeah, I mean the drives, they haven't complained. Wait, 
This is great, but remember you said you were gonna reach out to Seagate and find out what's the deal with these drives? I did. They didn't respond. At least they haven't yet, and it's been like four days or something like that. Okay. I did find a press release on their website about this program with eBay, and it makes it sound almost like they're taking drives that people were gonna throw away, like uh -huh. from a data center recycler, and refurbing them. I don't know. It doesn't say anything conclusively. And they look really new. They look really new. It seems like our best guess is that they're just customer returns or something like that. Okay, well. Bad batches they rehabbed. One way or another, in total, we spent $11,160 on 62 drives, which compared to the 23 and a half thousand we would have paid for new ones, seems like a pretty good deal, as long as they don't all crap out. For now, things look good, but it's hard to say what the long-term reliability is gonna look like. I'm hopeful though, especially given that none of them died immediately. So yeah. even if they do, the fact that we're using ZFS means we should be able to resilver and repair the array in a pretty safe way. Yeah, I mean, most hard drives either die like in the first day or, you know, three, four, five years later, right? Server part deals also warranties the drives themselves. So should be okay? Yeah, and full disclosure, um, I took about half of these drives for another project and they were running for six months. Oh. And they still don't have errors. Okay, well that's a good sign. Yeah, and to feed my data hoarder habits in this economy, I actually switched over to recertify drives at my house. And I've got two more, or three more of them actually, that have been running for multiple years now and they've been great. Now a brand new Exos drive is gonna come with a five year warranty instead of just two. But given these are around half the price with half-ish the warranty, it was kind of worth the gamble for me, but let us know in the comments if you've had any experience with recertified drives, either good or bad. Like, I don't know, we get flack sometimes when we show a good deal online and then it goes out of stock a few hours later and no one else can get the same deal, but that shouldn't be the case with these. There's an entire industry around reusing, recertifying and refurbishing enterprise IT equipment and there seems to be no shortage of storage devices. Uh, one of our favorites is the those JBOD disk shelves. Oh yeah, those allow you to connect a bunch of hard drives to like an existing system. And uh, we did a video on them a little while ago, you should check it out. Yeah, we also came across a pretty wild deal on some NVMe SSDs when we were researching this Ooh. project. So uh, happy deal hunting out there. For now, it's time for me to go hunting. It's Segway season. To our sponsor. Ground news. When you think of the news, you think gold hard facts, right? Wrong. Now more than ever, you're being told the stories that the media wants you to hear. Ground News is here to help filter out the fluff and let you come to your own conclusions. They gather articles on stories from thousands of sources and take into account political biases and allow you to compare the coverage and see how the story changes depending on who's reporting. I'm sure you've all heard that Pat Gelsinger recently retired as Intel CEO around when they announced their next generation of graphics cards. You can see on screen right now that reports are not really leaning heavily left or right, but there's a tiny bit of left-leaning bias. And thanks to their bias comparison tool, as more articles come in, you'll see a breakdown of what aspects of the story are being focused on by each side. Their blind spot tool is a great feature that shows you stories that might not be covered by your own preferred news sources. Go to ground.news slash LTT to get started and take advantage of a very limited 50% discount on their Vantage plans for yourself, or maybe as a little gift. If you guys like this video, why not check out the Mother Vault build? Hell yeah. That was pretty sick. That was like the deluxe version of those drive shelves. Yeah, well, it is exactly that. Yeah. And you know, I might use some of these drives as like spares for that. 